Welcome to the Midlife Midsters podcast, your podcast for inspiration on being bold and saying yes and making the most of midlife. We're so glad you joined us today. We're actually going to be talking a little bit about adventure and redefining adventure. We think of adventure as usually physical travel, like a journey that we choose to do somewhere, something very adventurous. We're going to talk a little bit today about how we can find it in the familiar, in the everyday, and how we can kind of spice up our life on a day-to-day basis. I, I'm Mary Ann. I'm Leslie Ann. I'm Marla. I'm Michelle. And our friend Carmen is not with us today because she had a scheduling conflict. So who of you would like to start out talking a little bit about where you're finding adventure, whether it's in the day-to-day or maybe you have planned something or done something recently, um, and how adventure that the, these adventures might be different in our stage of life than maybe choosing a, an adventure at a different age? You know, one interesting kind of adventure that I've been on for quite a while, which began during the pandemic and, and is now continuing, is the adventure of sort of redefining my space. During the pandemic, I was looking around my house and thinking, oh, it's so dark. <laughs> the furniture is dark. The rooms are dark. And I was stuck in them for long periods of time. And I spoke with a friend of mine about how depressing it was to just kind of like be in this dark room. And she was like, spice it up, paint your furniture. And I was like, what a perfect idea. So I bought a can of paint and I painted my dining room. I went from a dark wood to a white um, dining room. I learned how to reupholster and reupholstered the chairs, got new knobs for the thing. And I redid the room and it felt so amazing, both because I felt like it was a project that the doing of which was fun. The aftermath of it and the, the ability to enjoy this new room was great, but also just sort of refreshing my life. It was like pushing the reset button. Um, and then again, so that was like two, three years ago now, my husband and I just moved. And so we're looking around thinking, what of the things we have do we want to take with us? And what do we want to take an opportunity to kind of change? Like what things in our surrounding do we want to change up? So we spent several weekends furniture shopping, looking for new things, just little pieces here and there to kind of make the space look, again, new and fresh because we're going to be in a different place. So I think that's an adventure. And I think people don't often think about changing their their living environment as being adventurous, but it really can be. You really got into the DIY. Oh, I love it. I no, love and I've seen your furniture and it <laughs> looks great and it does look different. But yeah, that that's a hard working adventure. And I know there were lessons and, uh, along the way because like the reupholstering piece of it, I bought a staple gun to staple the uh, backing onto the chairs and then realized it's pneumatic. So you need an air compressor. Um, so then I got in touch with a friend who actually has an air compressor and went over to his uh, workshop and he was helping me put the chairs together. And like, that was kind of fun. It, right. it, just the whole thing was an adventure. I think the funnest adventures are the adventures where we end up with some personal growth and you learned a skill there mm-hmm. and some personal growth because there is perseverance to all that as well. All the sanding and painting, sanding and painting. And you're like, ah. Oh. And there were a few do-overs like yeah. taking off what I put on and doing it again. No, I like that. Anybody else? Well, I'm kind of on an adventure because I'm living solo for the first time in my adult life, actually my my entire life. So my husband retired and he's taken a 10-month job in La Jolla, California. So I'm living on my own. I'll visit, but mostly on my own. And so one of the adventures has to do with cooking because my husband was the cook for our family. He loves it. He's great at it. I'm not good. So I bought a vegan Thai cookbook and I've already made vegan pad thai. And I'm going to work my way through that. So instead of seeing it as a chore, which I normally feel about food preparation as a chore, I'm going to try to be a little more adventurous. And I'm going to actually do different types of cuisine to kind of keep it, you know, interesting. And then also around the house, I've got a lot of projects, things that I need to get done. And a lot of unexpected things. Like today I was outside and I heard this slamming noise. I come back in the house, I go into this room and I see that the double hung window has broken its sash and it's come down. And so it's exposed. There's no uh, screen. I have to figure out how to get this thing to go back up because I I don't want bats to come in at night and be really stressed out. So I had to cut wood um, with like a little hand saw. I had multiple times and it was really hard to do, but I got it. I got it done. So that was a little adventure in figuring out how to troubleshoot a broken window. Not something I expected today. And I think I think things out of the routine of our day-to-day 
can be adventurous. I know even when I go walking or running, I like to switch up my paths. I even find that adventurous. You know, it's funny you say that because growing up, my dad, we always lived about an hour from his office. And that was kind of deliberate because he was a plant manager. And he wanted to be far enough away that if there was an emergency at night, they couldn't call him because he couldn't go back. Um, but anyway, because we lived an hour from work, there were multiple ways of getting to work. And he took a different route every single day. And that really ingrained itself in my head. So I still do that today. <laughs> when I go someplace, I, I try to go different ways every time I go just to see different things. It's fun. So when I was uh, thinking about adventure and feeling like I wasn't very adventurous and I looked up the definition that includes taking a risk and I realized I'm not a big risk taker. That's just not how I'm wired. And then I started to think about what my life has been like over the last few years. And you've talked about living on your own for the first time. And I've been living on my own for four years now and uh, dating and Dating is a huge risk, and opening yourself up emotionally is an adventure. And while it may not be a different running route, which I do like to do, it's a major emotional risk. Well, I think hobbies um, as well can be a way that we can become adventurous. It could be through creative writing. I love photography. You love, well, we all kind of like photography here. And when I first learned how to do photography, other than just pushing the automatic button, um, and I got a little more serious about it, I took my camera to places I would never have gone before. You too. Mm -hmm. So from being on fishing boats and crabby boats and deserted islands and other places in the world, where that I might not have gone without that hobby and that camera. But I do find even using it close to home, especially if you have your iPhone, people can literally just put an hour aside, go to a park and take their phone with them and start learning how to do iPhone photography. So we can mix our days up and do things like that that are adventurous as well. And you know, sometimes it's the it's what you think you're gonna take from the adventure. So when I started with photography, I think you know this, Marianne, when I started a number of years ago, um, you know, I was already in my 50s and I was sort of like really getting into it. And it was like, do I really need to spend my time and money and energy at something that like, I'm, it's not like I'm going to be a professional photographer. And then I stumbled on this photography workshop and the working, the title of it was Contemplative Photography. And she talked about using photography as a way to connect with your environment. So don't go with the notion that you're going to go take great pictures and you're going to show them in a gallery someday and you're going to sell a million copies. Go because you're looking into your environment a little more deeply. And when you're taking photographs, think about what you're photographing and how it resonates with you and what it means about your environment. And I was like, bingo, that's why I'm doing this. This is a perfect reason to continue doing photography. It doesn't have to be a, a profession. It doesn't have to be a money-making thing. It can be as simple as using the iPhone. But I am often now, when I'm out and about doing things, taking pictures, because it's almost like recording little poems in my head in a visual form. Right. And I, I just love that. Like, what can I see today in my environment? So Marla, I was struck by something you said about risk, and you mentioned emotional risk. And I think adventure does um, imply a little bit of risk, a little bit of unknown, is this really going to pan out? And I think that's a great reminder. Well, and I think I, I'm thinking back to some walks or hikes that we've taken and, and it's going a little bit of a different route or should we go down this steep slope or go around that bend as we did in Maine, walking around an island and not really being 100% sure it connected all the way and we might have to turn back around. So I think some of it is a little bit of what's your level of comfort with the unknown. And I love what you talked about with, you know, having to fix a window. Um, I, I fixed my uh, grill and was on the phone like six times with the people and putting the igniter in. But that feeling of accomplishment, and again, it's that doing something you haven't done before is a type of adventure. 
And I was actually listening to author, author earlier, uh, our, our podcast with um, Betsy Withacombe, and she talked about trying new things and how she wrote a book and that adventures are inside of you and around the corner and are small things as well as big things, whether it's trying to grow a plant in your yard or I actually have, um, I don't know what the right terminology is, but rebloomed an orchid, but actually it there's a bud now for the third go round. And for me, that's an incredible adventure of horticulture when I never have had a green thumb. You know, it's interesting with adventures, I think, too, because the adventures or the hobbies, the things that I do now aren't things that I would have thought of doing when I was younger. When I was in that risk-taking age, I think about boating and um, learning to boat and getting a captain's license, as well as doing triathlon, different things. But it was stepping out of my comfort zone, things I never thought I would do, even though I think I was more courageous or fearless back then, though I feel like I'm fearless now. I do try to step out of my comfort zone. And for listeners, it can be so simple, stepping out of your comfort zone, like taking on the horticultural experience of keeping an orchid alive and letting it bloom again, or fixing something in your home. I don't know that I would tackle that. I think that's great, Michelle. Um, well, fear of bats can motivate you to do a lot of things. <laughs> that's, prob that's probably true. But I don't think we're ever too old to do something new. And I think it does keep our spirit kind of alive. And it is um, personal growth as well. And I will say another thing about doing adventures and hobbies and doing things is it's inspiring even to our children and our family that like they see us in a different light. I know all your kids see y'all in different lights because of things you're doing. And the biggest adventure that you guys have taken on, and I have too, is we're sitting here doing like this podcast. Who would have thought of that? And um, talking about issues and things that mean a lot to us and that are inspiring for us and we want other people to know about as well. So this is an adventure in itself and it's taken all of us to do that. So that collaborative effort doing an adventure is important too. So if somebody can't, is thinking, oh, I don't want to do something, get a friend, get a, a relative, take your child um, to go do something different and enjoy your day. And and there's ways of making it work, right? Like, so my, um, you, you know, this, my husband is, is really into cycling. That's his thing. And um, I, I'm not. So a few years ago, you know, we were sort of thinking through like, what kinds of things are we going to do together? And I said, well, well, maybe we should get a bike for me and then we can go cycling together. And his face was just <laughs> like, oh, and I was like, okay, well, that's not, I mean, I, I want to spend time with you. And he's like, yeah, but like you could never keep up. And and he was right. But bless his heart. <laughs> he came home the next day and he said, I thought about it. And I have a perfect solution. He bought us a tandem bike. <laughs> and, you know, and now we go out, not not as often as we should, but we do go out on the tandem bike. And that is totally an adventure. It's great. And it is so cool because every time we're out on that bike, people like wave at us and say, <laughs> oh, nice ride. Um, and, and he's doing most of the work. And it's actually been really interesting for me because it's it's really weird riding on a bike when you're not in control. I'm not steering and I don't have any control over the speed because I ride behind him. So I've had to really it, it like rod myself a little bit. It, it feels like a risk. It's not because mm -hmm. he's a very safe cyclist, but it feels like a risk. Um, but my, my point is it's doing it with someone else and finding a way to accommodate what both of you need. Right? right. So this was something he really loves to do that I wanted to do with him and we found a way to make it work. And it's been really phenomenally fun. That's great. You know, I think about you, Marla, and with, um, kind of redefining adventures and doing things, you always know all the great restaurants and all the new places to go to because you are a foodie. So listeners and I might not know that, but she knows champagne, she knows wine, and she knows food. And so I like that adventurous spirit of you as well because you will go out and try new things and do new things. And I know that also you're cooking quite a bit. I am <laughs> doing a little bit more of that. And I, I think, you know, to reiterate the point that 
we're all different and and each of our individual experiences is what motivates us to seek out new adventures. And so I think for me, what I was saying about not being a risk taker, I have been looking for security and stability because my life kind of turned upside down. And so taking on additional risk, like I, I didn't even, I didn't want to move out of my house. I didn't want to change the car that I had. I needed stability. Adventure wasn't what I was looking for. I didn't have the capacity for more risk in my life. But as I am settling into this new world order, I am looking to do more things, whether it's cooking, whether it's kayaking um, or more hiking, but also allowing myself to perhaps turn that other corner that I might not have gone down. And I think adventure can be on a continuum. So I think I think for our listeners, think of very small scale adventures that you can have. And I think, you know, when your life is a little bit topsy turvy or you have so many other plates that you're juggling, those little sparks, it doesn't have to be momentous. It doesn't have to be planning a solo trip around the world. And the other part I think about uh, adventure is uh, just cultivating curiosity. So I happen to like interior design and I was watching uh, on YouTube, tours of Nantucket Homes, and the Historical Association does this wonderful tour down Main Street. But through that, I learned that the first person, an American, to discover a comet was a woman. I never knew that before. So that led me down a curious rabbit hole of researching her. Um, I watched another designer and found she talked about her father, who was a philosopher, and that led to another kind of rabbit hole of learning about that. So adventure can also be intellectual curiosity kind of expanding, you know, horizons in your knowledge. And I'd love you, Leslie Ann, to talk about those friends of yours who take those trips. The quiet? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We have we have friends that have started taking their their Sunday morning walks and they go to different neighborhoods every uh, every week, a different neighborhood in DC. And you know the the that that just takes an ordinary thing, going out for a walk on a Sunday afternoon and elevating it to an adventure because you can do a little research and find out about that neighborhood. What's the history of it? What are the cool places there to stop and have lunch or to to a shop that you might want to stick your head in or a museum that's there that you might not ever go into other than the fact that you've made a conscious choice to go into that neighborhood. So yeah, that's taking the ordinary and making it into something extraordinary. Well, it's a mindset. Mm -hmm. I think if we wake up every day or a weekend and we have that mindset. We want to have something a little bit different, change up our routine, put a little spice in our day. We can do that. Another good um, thing for listeners, and my uh, my family does this, and I'm sure you guys do too, is just look at what the events are in your neighborhood or in your community, from fairs to museums to just different things. Farmers markets can be an adventure. So looking at those things and taking advantage of the simplest of things around us really does bring some adventure into our day where we're out of that rut or routine. And weekends are a great time to do that as well. Going and looking at the stars. You know, I love doing that. Me Now too. I'm going to redefine adventure as going outside <laughs> at night and looking at the stars. And sometimes you can see a lot of them. It's amazing. It's beautiful. So, yeah. And I'm going to go back to that emotion thing again, just because I, when I was making that pad thai, which this seems like such a small scale thing, but I actually got extremely nervous because it wasn't like thickening and it wasn't going well. And my daughter happened to be home and she's like, there's no pad thai police. I mean, <laughs> you know, try some cornstarch and water, make a slurry, throw it in. Like, but I think it, we have to, to be adventurous. We have to let go of performance expectations that are unrealistic. So there's going to be some failure. I mean, I could have broke the window. I mean, stuff's going to happen. And I think midlife is a nice time to give yourself permission to goof up or screw up a little bit. And that's mm -hmm. okay, too. I love that you said that because actually I, I had a conversation with a friend about growth mindset where you do activities not to become proficient or to gain mastery, but just to grow a little bit. And so like if you if your pad thai failed spectacularly, you still learned something about cooking because you learned something from the failure, right? And, and so you've grown. And that's what I think people should be striving to do. Um, and that applies to so many different things. Just give it a try and be willing to fail and take what lesson you learn from it because that's 
you're still, again, expanding and growing in midlife, which is wonderful. Lots of personal growth in hobbies and, and small adventures, for sure. And, you know, those small adventures, going back to the, the, you know, learning your neighborhood or learning other neighborhoods in your community, and then maybe learning a little more about other communities in your state, right? And for those who do like to travel, like I do, um, it doesn't always have to be going far afield. Like there are so many local or close by places you could go just for an overnight or a weekend to get that sense of something different and learn a little bit more about the place where you live. And, it, you know, that's a fulfilling adventure. Right. There's a lot of meetups, too. So people should look at their interests and the meetups in their area. And it might be a Saturday morning hike or it might be an open water swim. And that's another way they can meet people, plus have kind of a fun, adventurous day as well. I really love how we started this with redefining adventure, right? We all come to this with our own definition of what adventure is or Merriam-Webster's definition with the risk, but right, nobody's saying what that level of risk is. Nobody's saying whether your pad thai is going to taste the way it does at the local restaurant, but being true to yourself and being, as you said, looking at growth opportunities or not necessarily looking for growth opportunities, but recognizing that doing something different, something that's not in your daily routine is an adventure in and of itself. Well, maybe it's it's one thing to want to be adventurous, but then to be able to do it means also, as we've talked about today, like overcoming fear, anxiety, nervousness, you know, worry that it won't be perfect. I think sometimes if something seems daunting, maybe it's good to develop uh, your your backup strategies or mitigate the risks. So if, you, if something doesn't go wrong, it's not the end of the world. So it feels a little more comfortable trying it. Yeah, we're not letting fear of failure keep you from taking that first step forward. And I think also understanding it as a process. So set aside a time that you're going to do something that is outside of your comfort box and build around it comfort on every other angle. So you know, prepare for it and be prepared to, at the back end, to do something that's going to be comforting. So, you know, if you're going to go for a, a, a run or do some sort of race and you've never done that before, prepare for a massage afterwards or a nice hot bath and get yourself some bubble bath or whatever it is that you can do so that you can, you can structure the time around the adventure to be comfortable. You know, I think a lot of women our age to get into gardening and enjoying that but a whole garden is daunting and keeping everything alive. So an easier way, maybe less risk adverse, is to start with just a container garden. So a couple of containers on the back deck or the front porch. How about one? <laughs> I, I have on hydrangea <laughs> I planted and it's doing beautifully. And every day I go outside and, and look at how beautiful it is. You and did a beautiful job in your yard. I your a hydrangea myself. Oh, that's, that's all I did. <laughs> well, somebody helped you and it looks good because you're keeping it alive <laughs> in the backyard. But something as simple as that. So not taking on the whole big garden, but just doing a small piece. And like photography, a lot of people, well, everybody's kind of a photographer now because they have their phone. Who's going to look at your phone and your pictures? So you can follow people, photographers on Instagram. You can get a lot of tips. You can start going out and taking just small pictures of a sunrise or in the evening a sunset um, or something like that. And you can see your own progression. Just keep those because you will learn and nobody's going to judge. And yet it's fun. It's still fulfilling. And there is personal growth and skill to that. Do you, all, do you guys know the difference between type one fun and type two fun? No, but tell me. So type, type one fun is the kind of fun where it's fun and you know it's fun when you're doing it. Type two fun is the thing that isn't fun. It seems like work and it seems very hard. But when you're done, you're like, oh, I did that. That was fun. That's so called parenting. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I love, that's true. I was going to say, that's called camping. <laughs> okay. I, I always say, I love going camping, even if I don't sleep. So, you know, I so I was just thinking that it, it, it's kind of helpful maybe to our listeners to think about like you, you can build a little bit of start with type one fun, yeah. right? The things that are easy to do that you know you're going to enjoy 
and build yourself up to the type two fun, the things that are going to be harder, but you can anticipate that at the back end, it will be fun. And, and that's how you can develop an adventurous mindset. Good tip. Yeah. And if you're somebody who does get stressed out thinking other people are going to see you fail, then do it solo for a while. Like you said, you know, go do the photography and don't share it for a few months until you feel comfortable. Like make it safe enough that you'll do it. And then when you do things, you often discover, oh, that actually worked out pretty well. You know, and also remember, right, nobody's really judging us, right? I mean, I think the people who judge us the hardest are ourselves. And, and that might sound a little trite, but you know, I look at your photographs, both of you, and, and you'll say, oh, well, I could have done this differently or I should have done that. And so I think we are our own most critical critics. And maybe when we let go of that, we are a little freer to take those photographs and not show them to anybody but ourselves and get that joy of trying something new. You know, all of us were curious and enjoyed things when we were young. And it might have been watching butterflies or collecting flowers or playing an instrument that we kind of let go of, or we love that creative writing class in high school. So tuning in to what we enjoyed in our younger years is a great place to start because there's already that spark. It was there um, and igniting that and just going with it might feel a little more comfortable to someone than starting something totally new that they never had an interest in before. Um, but finding, yeah, just tapping into what they might have been interested in at a younger time in their lives. So remember that adventure is a mindset. It can be found in the smallest of moments. It does not have to be big physical travel. We can find it in the day to day. So I encourage all our listeners to do that. Um, also, let us know. We're at AmericanMidsters.com. Also, while you're there, please push that like button and subscribe. Thanks for joining us.